Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today I'm making rainbows on my gel plate. And in order to do this technique, it requires using a small amount of paint. Only that's a tall order for me because I really like to use a lot of paint. But I did find a way to consistently use a small amount of paint and I'm sharing that with you in this video. Making all these rainbows has led me to a conundrum, a challenge, a decision that has to be made and I am literally sitting on the fence and I would love to know what you think to help tip me one way or the other. All right, so we've got lots of color to play with here today, so let's dive on in. On each one of the paints, I've switched out the cap. The one that comes with it looks like this one, the big flat one. And what I did is I traded them out for a nozzle. And all you do with these is simply unscrew the cap that came with it and put these on top of it. Now this is something that I've done to almost all of my Amsterdam paints now because I love using these nozzles more than the big cap for a couple of reasons and I'll talk about those as we go through the video. The first of which is that it allows me to do a thin line of paint. And so that's the only reason that I can control this to get a thin line of paint with as heavy handed as I am is because of those nozzles that are on there. I was really skeptical of these when I first got them because I've tried all sorts of various paint tips, nozzles, that kind of stuff. And so many of them for me have clogged. And that's why I didn't tell you about these when I first found them, because if they were going to clog, I didn't want to share it with you because I wanted to save you that kind of hassle. And these, I've had them about six months now and they have not clogged on me. I'm actually really impressed with how well that these things have held up. An unexpected perk of these was also for traveling. Normally when I travel with paints, I actually use packing tape and close the lids and really seal it up so that way none of the paint comes loose in my suitcase because that makes a real mess. Last time that I flew, I used these nozzles on there instead of doing all the taping of lids, which takes a while, and not a single drop of paint spilled in my suitcase. So now anytime I'm traveling and I'm taking paint with me, these are my go-to. Once you've got all the colors on there that you want, then it's time to take that brayer and roll that color around. You want to follow the path of your rainbow, whether it's a half rainbow or a whole rainbow. After the first pass with the brayer, take a look at it and see if you want more paint on there. If you feel like you want a little more paint, take that brayer and just roll over it again until you've got as much coverage as you want. Then it's a matter of just putting that paper on there and taking the pull. I wanted a great big rainbow kind of vibe with this, and that's why I'm using the 12 by 14 gel press plate. That way I could get just this big piece of the rainbow on the print. There's still wet paint on that plate, so you bet I'm going to take the ghost pull here. Rainbows hold a special place in my heart, not just because of all those bright, wonderful colors that make me so happy, but because of what it symbolizes. And any symbol can mean a lot of different things. Rainbows can mean anything from hope to promise to peace to luck to new beginnings to eternal life. But the one that holds the most importance to me is the one for equality. You see, both of my kids are gay. And every time that I create a rainbow, I create with the rainbow, it's kind of like throwing it out there into the world about equality for my kids and for everyone in the LGBTQ plus community. If you've seen many of my gel printing videos, you might have noticed what I haven't done yet. Normally after putting my brayer in a color, I clean it off on a scrap piece of paper, an old piece of book text, something like that. But not this time. I've left all the paint on there and I am simply cleaning that brayer off by brayering it back onto the gel plate to create yet another rainbow. If you're new to gel printing or you're just looking for more ways to use your plate to get a better understanding of it, I've got an entire page of gel printing resources for you over on my website at acolorfuljourney.com and I'll have a link down below for you. And of course, there's a full supply list down there for you too. So here's the conundrum that I'm in. I want to take some of these prints and frame them. So I'm trying to decide what mat to put around them. Do I put a white mat around it or do I put a black mat around it? And when I say that I'm on the fence, I am literally on the fence with this. I like both of them and I can't decide which way to go. So if you've got an opinion about this, if you've got one that you like better than the other, let me know in the comments and help tip me one way or the other on this great big decision. Thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you've been enjoying this video, if you had fun, if you found it helpful, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, if you want more, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I've got a new video out. But you don't have to wait till then. If you want to see more of what I'm up to, you can check it all out on the website at acolorfuljourney.com. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.